this is a specialized, like, you guys like how I'm doing this? And you get to watch, and you get to watch, and look at this bike. I'm trying out my new fingers. I'm just I just got them last week, so they're they're just weird. Okay, anyways, got another custom e-bike build for you. I want to go over this bike. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerd Out. That's what I call myself. Sometimes other people call me that. I build bikes professionally. I convert bikes into e-bikes. So if you like stuff like that and hacks and workarounds and things like that and how to just really go nerdy on your e-bike, check out my other videos. Let's get right into it. <laughs> this is a specialized expedition. It's a little bit of an older bike. You can see it's got rim brakes. People are like, oh, it's got rim brakes. Don't do it. You'll die on it. It's simply not true. <laughs> um, some rim brakes actually work better than some disc brakes. So it just, it varies greatly. Generally, I would say, yeah, you probably want to have disc brakes. As long as they work good though, rim brakes are fine. You do want to keep better maintenance of them, keep a better eye on them, make sure that the pads are looking good, the, the rims are clean, and that they're actually like feeling strong when you're braking. But other than that, they're fine. This is a nice, comfortable bike. Look at this. Oh, that was so easy. I'm already on the bike, I'm ready to ride it. I don't have to like hop over. This is a nice comfortable bike. The older you get, the less you want to like strain, the less you like to go like this and go, I can't get it, I can't, I'm stuck, I'm gonna die. You know, no, you're fine. It's nice and comfortable. So handlebars are upright. If I'm sitting on it, I got the seat up too high. Nah, it's all right. It's got a suspension seat post on it. That's awesome. I didn't even realize that until now. But look at this, I'm comfortable. My hands are up, up more. I put the seat down, I'll be more, they'll be more upright, more comfortable. Okay, let's go over what I did to it. Put a BBS O2, it's a 750 watt mid-drive motor. Put a 52 volt, 16.75 amp hour battery pack on the back. So this bike is gonna get you probably 40 to 60 miles of range. As long as you're pedaling, it just kind of depends on how much you're pedaling and at what, how much pedal assist you're doing. But at like 15 miles an hour with you pedaling, you know, decent amount, not that you're killing yourself, but just, you know, a little bit. Probably get about 50 mile range out of this. Uh, the display went with a 500C color display. This is a nice color display. This is my go-to if you don't need a USB out to charge anything off of it, go with the 500C. Put a gear shift sensor on it, uh, put a rear rack on it, and then we put the battery on it so it doesn't interfere with, with anything here. We probably could have put it here and it would have been fine, but this way it's it's nice and it's nice and easy. If you're gonna be going off-road, heavy off-road, you probably don't wanna put a battery right there. If you're gonna be just going for light road rides, this is fine, it's, it's fine to put it there. We also installed a kickstand, cause look at this, no hands. But yeah, this is like a decent bike. And uh, you know what, let's go do a Johnny Nerd Out test, why not? Let's go see what this is. Let's go see how this thing performs climbing up hills and top speed without me pedaling even, just throttle alone, let's go. So you can see the battery was not fully charged. It was only about a 53 volts. Fully charged is 58.8. So it only hit 31 miles an hour. Um, probably if it was fully charged, probably would have hit 32, 33. But yeah, this isn't a speed machine anyways though. So you're not going for top speed. In fact, I'd probably want to dial this thing down and change the programming. And the, the, the more you change the top speed, how powerful it is and how much power it has, the further it's gonna go. So you're gonna get, you could get 100 miles out of this. If you're not in a hurry to go somewhere, you're not driving like you, you got a crap or something, you could get a 100 mile range out of this battery, no problem. Um, so yeah, this is a good example of a nice cheap e-bike conversion. So this was about 1200 bucks for this whole conversion, including the big battery, the motor, the rack, the kickstand. So yeah, without the rack and the kickstand, you'd probably be looking at like 1100, something like that for, for doing this yourself with a big range, if you wanted like, you know, 40 to 100 mile range. Obviously, you turn the battery off and you have a 2,000 mile range. That's the great part about this bike. I should start saying that. This bike has a 2,000 mile range because that's how a lot of e-bike manufacturers are doing it now. They're like, it has a 100 mile range. Even though it has a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery, I'm like, whose math are you using? Hope you guys found this helpful. 
Check out my other videos if you're into e-bike nerdy stuff. Later.